Diary of a Squat by Jean de la Rue. We're going to start with a letter that Jean wrote to his mates shortly after they opened the building. Really, the last two weeks have been among the most intense and passionate in my life. Life as we dream to live it throughout. Every moment filled with vibrating passion, hope, exhaustion, happiness, companionship. And despair also, at times, with the same intensity, but never lasting. I cannot hope to convey to you the atmosphere of these grand days, or even to tell you in detail what has been happening. Many of these beautiful moments are already sinking in my own memory as in moving sands. Feelings, impressions, thoughts, visions drift and spin flash in my mind. Steve and Mark being arrested the week before while inspecting the Belgrave Hospital for Children, their rucksacks full of leaflets, lists of names and addresses, minutes of meetings etc. And the anticipation that everything would collapse as a result. Excited and disorderly meetings hectic preparations, roaming around the streets with Mike, talking to homeless people and seeing their faces brighten up at the prospect of reclaiming the empty buildings of London, cycling up and down London on my birthday in the shining sun, leafleting all the night shelters and day centres, thinking as I go along that homelessness is not just about having a roof, it's also about not having a job, not having a place in society, not having a lover, fighting alcohol, drugs, the police, the social workers, the hooligans. And suddenly I think, gosh, we're making a huge blunder. Just putting a roof on these people's heads won't solve anything. They won't even be interested. A chain snapping at two o'clock in the morning. A window climbed. Banners unfurled all over. Homes for all. People not profit. Empty property is theft. People staring at us from the street, from cars, from behind shop windows. The relentless tension of the first day when we were visited by the police, seven fire engines, a number of alcoholics, drug addicts, epileptics, prostitutes, crooks, journalists, a member of parliament, a weightlifter, a not too friendly gypsy who said that he and his friends urgently needed a place to park their caravans and they would come at midnight and if we tried to stop them they would break every one of our bones. A bunch of guys who claimed to be IRA terrorists and assured us that they were on our side. A loony procession of all the misfits our scandalous social system was thrown adrift, battered, cheated, imprisoned, marginalised but without making a dent in their humanity, their kindness, their humour and their courage. Gloria, filling her cup with soup and then filling it again and then filling it again without noticing that it's all dripping on the floor. Patsy, the drunkard, the fighter, saying it was the first time in years that he hadn't drunk for a whole day because in this place he had found a family and something to do. If only clearing the rubble, first floor, then second floor, then further up, attending to journalists in between floors. Later he started drinking, but he still shows amazing restraint and never getting rowdy inside the squat. Steve, the plump beggar, roaming around with his Walkman plugged into his ears, gazing at the distance with an absent smile after seeing his face on TV. You'd never think that he'd just been to court for threatening to murder a policeman. And so many other forgotten, rejected souls who have so much to say, so much to give. A jazz band playing in the darkness and the cold of this derelict building until the fingers are too stiff to play. The entry group feeling depressed and worn out, except Mark and me, after the first day and deciding to surrender the building before it goes up in flames and blood. But then the homeless deciding to stay on. And you should see them getting organised, breaking fire escapes open, helping each other, clearing the rubble, putting banners at the windows and above all holding long meetings when you hear them saying the most moving things about how they've been raped and put to prison and driven to prostitution and alcoholism but also about how they now have a home and how we can live together as one family if we help each other. This is where I realised that my fears about the fact that a roof alone would not solve the problem of homelessness were quite wrong because in the Belgrave squat people have found not only a roof but also friends 
and something to live for. Help coming from all sides. Nearby churches opening up their kitchens. Neighbours dropping in with food, tools, clothes or just to talk. An old man taking a blanket off his bed to give it to the squatters. Kids cycling across London to bring a sweater, a heat or a letter of support. Everybody encouraging and approving. Quite an extraordinary response given that we had broken in illegally. And on the second day, most of this was only in the first day except the jazz band, the press flocking in, TV, radio, newspapers, magazines, the whole building being transformed by dozens of hands itching to work, to create, to share. The numbers and the sense of community growing day after day. As I'm taking my turn at watching the gate under a beautiful starry sky, exactly three days after the whole thing started, I can hardly believe what's happening. And what will the future bring? I'm not sure, but so far, at least, there's hope. A lot of hope.